do have to ask you some questions here, kind of about your career since we have you. I mean, of course, your your name precedes yourself as you know the the most successful American skier as far as medals and or a male skier as far as medals and and podiums. So, um, the first thing I wanted to start with was just the how ski tech itself has evolved. You know, from those first days of you, you know, cutting your teeth trying to make it on the scene to the very end of your career and to now. You know, how have you seen ski tech evolve? Uh, maybe like, you know, some of those, the big noticeable things. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Skio, which is our, it's an app that Crossen is working in conjunction with Skio. Um, we're the only factory mount version of it. Um, yeah, people can buy it on the open market, but we're the only, you know, partner, manufacturing partner um, with that. And Skio is a sensor system where one little, Sensor goes on either ski just in front of the binding and you wear one on your chest, like a heart rate monitor, and it uses the telemetry in your phone to measure everything. And, and I would say, um, you know, that's a huge, that's a huge thing that was missing for my whole career was when we, I, I was one of the first people, I was the first one to start the shape ski thing with K2 uh, in racing. And, you know, then there was the evolution of early rise and rockered skis and, and every, everything got wider. Um, but there's certain things that are really stagnant. Bindings, for instance, haven't really changed much in 40 or so years. And it's a system, right? It's just like a car. I hate making the analogy again, but tires, suspension, you know, chassis, right? If you have really good tires, but, you know, horrible suspension, the car is not going to work correctly. And right now we're sort of in that in-between phase where the skis, I believe, have gotten better. The technology has evolved. There's been some really great ideas and, and great evolution there. But the, the rest of the system, the bindings and boots haven't really gotten better. So they're not really much safer. They're not really much better for performance, especially on a wider ski. All the bindings have these screw patterns that are about that far apart designed for skis that are about this wide. Now all the skis are much wider and no one's really ad adapted to that stuff. But one of the things that, that Skio does is objectifies all that information because there's no, you know, ski tests, as you said, can be overwhelming because you kind of know that the people are getting paid off the back end to like say, make sure we're in the top three of this, this ski test. And, and with no objective data, if you're a golfer, you know, a golf driving, you know, test or, or review in a magazine is going to have launch angle, you know, compression rates of the, of the club. It has what weights move around. It has all this objective stuff that you can say, okay, you know, yes, this, this tester like this one better, but here's all the data as well that kind of either supports that or, or refutes it. And, and then with Skio, we really felt like, and again, we're a very transparent company. We don't say that we're the, you know, hands down the best. We're not, you know, everything and, and everything to skiing, but we have a very transparent view of things like, look, test it, see what you think. And here's some objective data as well. So if you think you stop faster on those skis, or you can turn quicker, or you can pull heart tighter radius, or they don't make you as tired, test it out. You have, you have objective data that's not it's not somebody telling you, oh, you're, you're, you're doing this when you ski or you look like that. It'll give you all this information objectively based on, on technology and sensors. And I think that allows things to move in a different way. It's democratizing that information that was generally reserved for instructors or coaches or, you know, I guess some experts. In this case, yeah. we want to share that with people and let them experience Like, Look, okay, my, I felt different on this ski and here's the data um, to back that up. And if, if our skis are better, Great. And we think they're going to be, but um, if not, then absolutely. At least you have that information and we want you to have a good time on whatever ski you're on. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty amazing kind of how that technology is coming along. I'm, I'm interested to see how that's applied to things like you just said, like with ski testing and, you know, getting hard data, at least that I know that's something I'd be interested in for, you know, objectified data. Well, and, and internally it helps us as well, because if the person allows us, we can see, look, you bought a, you bought a 118, right? It's a great ski. I love it. I ski on it, you know, on powder days. But if I'm primarily on groomers, I'm not skiing a 118 underfoot, right? I'm going to ski something that's narrower that's made for, for groom trail. So if the people allow us to, we can say, you know, do a push notification halfway through a season. Hey, we notice you've skied 99.9% .9 of your time on groom trails. <laughs> Maybe try the 98 underfoot or the carving ski, the 78 underfoot, um, you know, it might, it might give you a better experience out there. You might have more fun, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's that, again, it's gentle. And we're basically just trying to give information like this is what makes sense and you make the decision. But I think it's been missing for a long time in the sport and I'm happy to bring it.